I would be willing to bet that you clicked on this video because some part of you, even if that part is super small and really deep down, dreads lesson planning. Maybe you feel like it takes too long or every time you sit down to lesson plan, you find yourself in some deep rabbit hole online searching for ideas but getting nothing done. Now I'm gonna have to go online and look at turtles. Regardless of your reasoning, it's okay. I'm here to help. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my top secret for making your lesson planning not only easier but also much faster. I don't know if you're old enough to remember Cliff Notes or if they even still make Cliff Notes. I kind of hope they do, but we're gonna be creating a Cliff Notes version for our lesson plans. Something like this, where it is a one pager, although it can really go on to multiple pages, with all of your materials and activities and ideas in one place. That way, when you sit down to lesson plan, you are pulling from everything you already have rather than trying to recreate it from scratch or remember what you have stored in some random digital file or filing cabinet and you can't remember what's in there. I'm gonna be using Google Docs and in fact, this template you see is a freebie I've created for you on my website. The link for that will be down in the description box. I really like using Google Docs for this because it will easily expand onto multiple pages if needed, but feel free to recreate this in any other program of your choosing. And before we jump into it, I just wanna clarify, this is meant to be used digitally. However, it can be printed. We are actually gonna be adding in links to files, which is why it's best used digitally. But if you would rather have a paper copy, you can totally print it out. So one of the first things we're gonna do is just change the title. For this example, we're gonna do a measurement conversions unit overview, and I'm just going to delete the word template. I'm going to also change my unit title up here at the top to measurement conversions. And this is meant for fourth grade. So I'm going to change that to fourth. This is obviously a math unit. And for the time frame, you're really looking at how long would I have to teach this unit? And that will vary from unit to unit and even subject to subject. But just as an example, let's do 10 days. Now I'm gonna fill in my standards. Now, I always taught using Common Core standards, so this one would be 4MDA.1 and 4MDA.2. Now I'm gonna add in some objectives. These would be those student-friendly phrases that represent what we're gonna cover over the course of 10 days. Even though this is only two standards, I'm gonna have much more than two objectives because each standard is actually made up of several different things my students need to know how to do. If you struggle with writing objectives, you can find resources online where they will break down the standards into possible objectives. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in a few. I can understand relative sizes of measurement within one system, and I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so for this unit, my objectives would be, I can understand relative sizes of measurement within one system. I can convert measurements into other units. I can determine measurement equivalencies and record them in a table. I can solve a variety of word problems involving distance, mass, weight, capacity, time, and money, along with I can represent measurement amounts using number lines and diagrams. Now I'm gonna fill in the vocabulary words for this unit. I'm gonna put, Everything that's related to this unit, I may not exclusively teach all of these words, but they are vocabulary terms my students need to be familiar with. The word no, not even in her vocabulary. Some of them I might have displayed on a bulletin board. Other ones will just kind of be used as I'm teaching the lessons, but I'm just gonna brain dump them all in one place. And me being me, I'm gonna put them in alphabetical order. That's a good enough start. The great thing about having something like this digitally is that you can always go in and add to it if while you're actually planning the unit, you come up with more ideas or you've noticed that your students are struggling with a certain term, you can always come back and add it in. 
Next, we're moving on to materials. I almost think about this as just an inventory for what I have available. I'm not necessarily going to use every single one of these materials, but it's just something I can kind of pull from when I might need ideas. And I like to have it separated between physical materials that I would have to dig through cabinets in my classroom for, as well as digital materials that I have stored on my computer or in my Google Drive as files. Now, some of these, especially the physical materials, I'm just creating a list for the digital ones. I want to actually link the files. That way it's super easy for me to access them when the time comes. So I'm going to start by filling in my physical materials and then I will show you how to link to specific digital materials. Okay, so for physical materials around measurement conversions, I obviously have those vocabulary cards, which I will display on a bulletin board. I would have, you know, rulers, meter sticks, yardsticks, tape measures. I had those capacity containers like the big gallon jug, scales, mini clocks, plastic coins. And then I did have a few books related to measurement and measurement conversions as well. And I wanna make sure I list those. I'm not necessarily going to use all three books, but at least they're there in case I need them. Moving on to the digital materials. Y'all know I love to teach from slides, and so I would create a set of Google Slides for each unit I taught, and it would have all the slides I need for the entire unit. I wanna make sure I link to those slides so that it's super easy to open them when I need them. So I could type the title of the slide and create a hyperlink, or within Google Docs, this is a newer feature, I can create a chip. So I'm gonna type the at sign and I'm gonna to start to type the title of that file. So I have it called measurement conversion slides right there. I'm going to click it and it now has linked to those slides. If I hover over it with my mouse, I will actually see this preview of the slides and I can see some of the information and I can even click open preview and it will open a larger version of it. So I can click through the slides and take a look at them, which is super convenient when I'm actually planning. So I'm now just going to repeat this process for some of the other files that I have. So now I wanna list websites for some digital manipulatives that my students might use if they're completing digital assignments. But because these are not a file in my Google Drive, I can't add a chip, but I can add a hyperlink. So in order to add a hyperlink, I'm gonna highlight the text I want to be linked. I'm going to right click. I'm gonna scroll down and select insert link and I'm going to paste the link. So I've already opened these up in other tabs. I'm just going to copy that URL, come back to the Google Doc, I'm gonna paste it, and then click apply. So now I can click on it and it will show me that link. And from here I can click and it will open up that link. So I'm just gonna repeat that for each of these. So in addition to those digital manipulatives, I also linked to a study jams activity on Scholastic. There are also a lot of YouTube videos I would use for this unit. So what I'm gonna do is type the title. So for example, metric system conversion song, and I'm going to link it to those YouTube videos. So I'm gonna insert link, come over to YouTube, copy the link, paste it and apply. Once again, it will open up that preview and I can just click to go to it. So I'm gonna repeat that process for each of the videos that I would want to have linked.
that's good enough for now for my materials. Again, I can continually add to this, but moving on to activities and assessments. Now, this template is editable, so if you would rather group assessments in with activities, you can always rename this to be whatever you would like. But I'm actually gonna start with assessments because I feel like there's not as much when it comes to assessments versus activities. But I know that I have a measurement conversions pre-assessment that I would give before the unit starts. I have exit tickets. And again, if those are in like a Google Doc or a Google Slides file, I can link directly to them. I have a measurement conversions quiz and then the quarterly assessment that my students would take. Moving on to activities. Most of these are gonna be linked to specific files I have on my computer. So for example, one that I have is called What's Being Measured, and it's a PDF file, but I can still link to it. So I'm gonna put that in there. I have a length scavenger hunt, which technically that's just like a paper copy that I had. I didn't have it digitally. Now, technically I could put that under physical materials, but I would rather not have things in multiple places. So since that is its own activity, I'm gonna put it under activities instead of physical materials. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I also had a memory game and oh, the kingdom of gallon kingdom of Gallon, that's also a PDF that I can link to because it's in my Google Drive. There's the Gallon Man activity, that was just paper copies that I had. Task cards, those were in my closet. Then I had, ooh, the rock, paper, scissors, paper. Okay, so this was just an activity that students could do in Partners. I'll open up the preview so you can see it. So they would be racing each other. They would do rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins gets to move up their side and they have to complete that measurement conversion. Popper Palooza, which is just a PDF file. This was using those poppers from like the target dollar spot. They would pop the ball and then measure how far it went and convert it to the different measurements. And then I had the case of the melted snowman. So this is where they had to convert all the different units. So they had to find the length of the arms, the mass of the carrot from the nose, and then the capacity of the water. And that was a digital file that I had. Oh, and then I had a Trasketball review. Trasketball measurement conversions. So this would be a game we would do at the end of the unit before they take their quiz. If you are interested in the Trasketball template that you can use to create your own games, I will link that for you down below, as well as my slide templates, like what I have here where they're all linked together, that will be down in the description box. <laughs> now we are moving on to differentiation strategies. I'm not gonna list out every differentiation strategy under the sun because a lot of them work for any subject area or any skill or topic. I wanna focus on differentiation strategies that are more specific to this unit. So for example, I might have students measure out each unit using physical tools or containers with different units and comparing. So I might pull students into a small group and literally give them the physical like gallon and pints and all that and have them measure it out in order to compare. I would also have them work on estimating which unit would be best for real life examples. So having them think about if I'm measuring how much water is in a pool, would it make more sense to use, you know, liters or milliliters, things like that. I would also have them draw models to generalize conversions, which that would be used a lot in math, but I wanna make sure I have it on here as an idea. Creating tables to notice patterns, especially with like skip counting. Horse to fly and fly to horse. So this was one of my favorites. If you don't know this, basically horse represents a larger unit and fly represents a smaller unit. So I would have them say horse to fly, multiply, and then fly to horse, divide of course. With that, I also had them do hand motion. So it'd be horse, because your arms are open big, to fly, multiply, your arms kind of make a multiplication sign, and then fly to horse. This one's a little bit of a stretch, but it's almost like a division sign, like your arms are the middle line in your head and like your feet can be the little dots. It worked for some students. <laughs> I would have them use manipulatives for solving conversions 
using the four operations. And keep in mind, none of these are linked to anything. They're just ideas. So if I have a student struggling, I could look at this and go, hmm, what can I do? It just helps to have it all in one place. I know Splash Learn also has some activities al along with Khan Academy and those I can actually link to. So let me get that done. Okay, so now we're moving on to some of those connections. And I like to think about it as how can I connect this to other subject areas? So cross curricular connections. Do that connection. As well as real world connections. Again, I may not use every single one of these when I'm teaching this unit. It's just ideas to kind of pull from. So starting with cross curricular, I'm gonna kind of break it up by each subject area. So for ELA, I would tell them the Kingdom of Gallon story. And then I had those books, so how big is a foot, the metric system, and millions to measure. And then I also like to have students write their own story. So based on those books that I would read them, a good early finisher option would be to have them write their own kind of children's story picture book around the topic of measurement conversions. For science, I mean, science is easy because you use measurements measurements and experiments. I would typically take them on a trip to the science lab and have them look at like the graduated cylinders and the different measuring tools in there. For social studies, we can hit on the history of the metric system as well as the history of the customary system. And then I think a fun activity would be identifying which countries use which systems. Okay, that's good enough for that. For real world connections, again, this is just to get my brain kind of flowing. I always like to do comparisons for each unit. So creating almost like a benchmark for them of when you think about an inch, here are things that are about an inch long. When you think about a foot, here are things that are about a foot long. So then I would always bring in like the cafeteria milk jugs and use those because my students were super familiar with those. Recipes are fun to look at for this. Grocery store ads, like the circulars that you get, you can look at the different measurements for things. Also the scales at the grocery store, when you measure like your fruit and things like that. And then I would typically have them do like a scavenger hunt of examples around the school, trying to find real world connections. So now we are on to the lesson progression. Now, I'm just gonna warn you with this, you can get as detailed as you want. You could write out your full lesson descriptions in this area. You could link to formal lesson plans that you have. So for example, if I had this full lesson plan on measurement conversions, like let's say this was lesson one of the unit, I could actually link to that here. So I could highlight lesson one and I could insert the link and it's unit five lesson one and it will be able to pull that up here. But I'll be honest, how I typically use this was just kind of an overview of what I'm going to cover in that lesson. I would actually detail it out in those slides that I mentioned earlier. So for this, it was just kind of deciding for those 10 days, what am I covering each day? And personally, I always start at the end. So if I know that last day is going to be an assessment, the day before is probably going to be a review. And then from there, I have eight days left in order to cover those different objectives. So for example, day one might be an overview of length, mass and weight and capacity. Just kind of, if you're measuring this, is that length, mass or capacity? Then moving on to lesson two would be an introduction to the metric system. And we would probably go ahead and cover length mass and capacity in that lesson because with the metric system and those abbreviations, those prefixes, it makes it much easier to cover them all at once. Then we're gonna work on converting within the metric system. And again, that's gonna be length, mass and capacity. So converting between units. Then I would probably move on to introduction to the customary system. 
and I would probably just do length and weight in the same day and I would have a separate day for capacity because it's more involved. So introduction to the customary system for capacity. And then I would have converting within the customary system. And that would be for all of them. So length, weight, and capacity. Then day seven or lesson seven would focus on solving word problems with measurement conversions. And I would have two days of that. So I'm just gonna copy that and put it here as well and put continued. Okay, so that gives me an idea of what I'm covering for each of those 10 days that I allotted for this unit. Then the notes section, this is a great place to keep track of maybe ideas that you have, things you've seen other teachers do, or things you've learned from teaching this unit in the past. Obviously, if you're a brand new teacher, I recommend taking notes as you're teaching the unit, what's working, what's not. But if you're a veteran teacher and you've taught this before, you already know some of those misconceptions students are gonna have and the areas they're gonna struggle along the way. So this is a place just to keep track of that. So from my experience, I know that it's best to start with the metric system rather than the customary system because the prefixes carry over between units. I know that students need to know benchmarks for each unit, like they need to know a real life object that's about that size or weight. I know that the standard does not differentiate between mass and weight. So technically with the metric system, it is mass and with the customary system, it is weight. I'm gonna explain if needed, like if my students are curious, I will go into detail. Otherwise, not really necessary. And then I also know that I need to highlight the difference between fluid ounces and ounces because my students would kind of get confused between those. And once again, I can add to this as I go. So now I have this unit overview and when it is time to plan my lessons, I can open this up. I've already got my objectives. I already know what materials I have to pull from. I have ideas of activities. I have ideas for differentiation. I have that lesson progression. Yes, this can be a little bit time consuming to set up from the beginning. Many small time make big time but it's one of those things that your future self will thank you for because it makes your life so much easier. So if this is something new to you, I suggest just take it one unit at a time. Don't sit down and try to do this for every unit for the entire year. It will be overwhelming, but as you go along, create this, use that free template, which is linked for you down in the description box. You can customize it however you need it, but trust me, once you have this set up, it makes your life so much easier. I also have a video coming where I will share how to organize all of your materials for a specific unit within your Google Drive. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.